Hi students, this is Dr. Gonzalez. I hope you're having a good day when you're watching this video or a good night if you're watching it overnight. And let's just go ahead and get started with the following topics. All right, if we remove a few of those layers like the platysma and sternocleidomastoid, then we're gonna see some of these infrahyoid muscles. So we're gonna start with the sternohyoid. The sternohyoid, it's located superficially and medial to the superior belly of the homohyoid. The origin of this muscle is gonna be posterior surfaces of the manubrium of the sternum and the sternal end of the clavicle. The insertion is the body of the hyoid. The innervation of the sternohyoid, it's gonna be the ansa cervicalis, which comes from the ventral rami of C1 to C3. And the action is to depress the hyoid bone. Next is the homohyoid. This muscle has an inferior and superior belly connected by an intermediate tendon. So we're gonna start with the inferior belly. The inferior belly attaches to the superior border of the scapula, just medial to the suprascapular notch. It passes anteriorly and superiorly across the lower part of the posterior triangle of the neck. Then it passes deep to the sternocleidomastoid and it ends in the intermediate tendon. We also have the superior belly. This superior belly begins at the intermediate tendon and it ascends almost vertically in the anterior triangle of the neck. It attaches to the body of the hyoid, just lateral to the sternal hyoid. The nerve supply for this muscle is the ansa cervicalis, and the action is to depress the hyoid bone. Next is the sternothyroid, which is this muscle right here. This muscle is located deep to the sternal hyoid. The origin, it's gonna be the posterior surface of the manubrium on the sternum, as you can see right here from a posterior view. The insertion is gonna be the oblique line of the thyroid cartilage, this one right here. The nerve supply is gonna be the ansa cervicalis, and the action of this muscle is to depress the larynx. And lastly, over here, we also have the thyrohyoid, which is an upward continuation of the sternothyroid. But the thyrohyoid, the origin is gonna be the oblique line of the thyroid cartilage. The insertion, it's basically, it's gonna run superiorly over the thyrohyoid membrane and it inserts into the greater horn and body of the hyoid bone. The nerve supply is C1 fibers via the hypoglossal nerve, and the action is to depress the higher bone or elevate the larynx. These muscles that I just mentioned are gonna be innervated by a structure called the ansa cervicalis, which is a nerve loop that contains fibers from the ventral rami of C1 to C3 spinal nerves. So there's two loops, the lower root is a direct branch of the cervical plexus and it contains fibers from the ventral rami of C2 and C3. It then passes superficial but sometimes deep to the internal jugular vein and then it joins the upper root to form the ansa. Now the upper root appears to originate from the hypoglossal nerve but it contains no hypoglossal fibers. So it mainly consists of C1 fibers that join the hypoglossal nerve and it travels with it, but for some distance. Then it separates from the hypoglossal nerve and it forms the upper root of the ansa cervicalis. And then it joins the lower root to form the ansa cervicalis. So this structure gives branches that supply sternohyoid, sternothyroid, and both bellies of the homohyoid muscle. Now, some C1 fibers will continue with the hypoglossal nerve and supply the thyrohyoid and geniohyoid muscles. The muscles I mentioned earlier, they are known as infrahyoid muscles. 
Now we're gonna go over other muscles in the neck that we call the suprahyoid muscles. So we're gonna start with the digastric muscle. This muscle has a posterior and anterior bellies connected by an intermediate tendon. If you look over here, we got the posterior belly. This posterior belly attaches to the digastric notch medial to the mastoid process and it runs anteriorly and inferiorly and then it becomes continuous with the intermediate tendon. This intermediate tendon as you can see right here pierces the lower part of the stylohyoid muscle and it runs in a fibrous sling connected to the body and the greater horn of the hyoid bone and then it becomes continuous with the anterior belly. Now the anterior belly runs anteriorly and superiorly and it attaches to the digastric fossa of the mandible. The nerve supply for the posterior belly is the facial nerve and for the anterior belly is the nerve to the mylohyoid, which is a branch of the inferior alveolar nerve which originates from the mandibular branch or V3. And the actions of this muscle is to depress the mandible and elevate it. Next muscle is the stylohyoid. This muscle has an origin in the styloid process of the temporal bone. The insertion is basically into the hyoid bone at the junction of the body and greater horn. And it is pierced near its insertion by the intermediate tendon of the digastric. The nerve supply for the stylohyoid is the facial nerve and the action is to elevate the hyoid bone. Next is the mylohyoid. This muscle lies superior to the anterior belly of the digastric. There's gonna be two mylohyoid muscles that form the floor of the oral cavity. The origin of this muscle is the mylohyoid line of the mandible. The insertion, these fibers attach to the body of the hyoid bone the rest of the fibers terminate in the midline raphe, extending from the mandible to the hyoid. The nerve supply is the nerve to the mylohyoid, which is a branch of the inferior alveolar nerve, which originates from the mandibular nerve, or V3. And the action is to elevate the floor of the mouth during swallowing, and it elevates the hyoid bone and depresses the mandible. And lastly, for the suprahyoid muscles, we got the geniohyoid. This is a narrow muscle that lies above the mylohyoid in contact with the corresponding muscle of the opposite side. The origin is the inferior mental spine. The insertion is the body of the hyoid. The nerve supply is C1 fibers via the hypoglossal nerve. And the actions of this muscle is to elevate the hyoid bone and depresses the mandible. Now let's talk about other additional muscles we have in the neck. For example, we're going to talk about the scalene muscles. Uh, and these are three specific muscles. We got the scalenus anterior, which is the one highlighted in blue right now. The origin is the anterior tubercles of the transverse processes of C3 and C6 vertebrae. The insertion is the scalene tubercle of the first rib. And some of the important anatomical relations of this muscle, it's going to be the fact that anterior to the scalenus anterior, we're going to have a few structures such as the subclavian vein, the phrenic nerve, and the transverse cervical and suprascapular arteries. And then posteriorly, as you can see right here, we're going to have the brachial plexus and also the subclavian artery. Now, there's also another muscle called the scalene medius. This is the largest and longest of the scalene muscles. The origin is the posterior tubercles of the transverse processes of C2 to C7 vertebrae. And the insertion, it's going to be the superior surface of the first rib between the costal tubercle and the groove for the subclavian artery. And then we have... Uh, scalene posterior which is this muscle right here 
This is the smallest of the scalene muscles. The origin is the posterior tubercles of the transverse processes of C4 to C6 vertebrae, and the insertion is the outer surface of the second rib. You can see it going down there towards the second rib. The inner supply for scaling muscles, it's going to be the ventral rami of the cervical spinal nerves. Specifically, the scalenus anterior is C4 to C6. Scalenus medius, the one highlighted here, is C3 to C8. And scalenus posterior is going to be C6 to C8. And the actions of the scaling muscles is for lateral flexion of the neck and they also work as accessory muscles of inspiration. Another muscle we're going to see it's the longus capitis which is highlighted here in blue. The origin of this muscle is the anterior tubercles of the transverse processes of C3 to C6. The insertion is the inferior surface of the basilar part of the occipital bone. The nerve supply is the ventral rami of C1 to C3 spinal nerves and the action of this muscle is the flexion of the head. We also have longus coli, which consists of three parts. There's an inferior oblique, superior oblique, and vertical. This muscle, the inferior oblique part, extends from the bodies of T1 to T2, or T1 to T3 vertebrae, and two anterior tubercles of transverse processes of C5 to C6 vertebrae. The superior oblique part extends from the anterior tubercles of transverse processes of C3 to C5 vertebrae to the anterior tubercles of the atlas. The vertical part extends from the bodies of C5 to T3 vertebrae to the bodies of C2 to C4 vertebrae. The nerve supply for this one is the ventral rami of C2 to C6 spinal nerves. In the action, it's also flexion, but in this case, flexion of the neck. Here we can see longus coli superior oblique. This one is the longus coli vertical. And this one is the longus coli inferior oblique. Last but not least, we have two rectus muscles. We got a rectus capitis anterior, for sure here is RCA. This one's located posterior to the upper part of the longus capitis. The origin is the anterior surface of the lateral mass of the atlas. And the insertion is the inferior surface of the basilar part of the occipital bone. The nerve supply is the ventral rami of C1 and C2 spinal nerves. And the action is the flexion of the head. Then we have the rectus capitis lateralis, for sure here is RCL. The origin of this muscle is the upper surface of the transverse processes of atlas. And the insertion is the inferior surface of the jugular process of the occipital bone. The nerve supply is the ventral rami of C1 and C2 spinal nerves. And the action is the lateral flexion of the head to the same side of the contracting muscle. And if you want to learn more about this information, check out this video that we have tagged over here. And that's it for today. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed and I'll see you on the next one.